before you ask me the question, do robots take people's jobs? I say absolutely not. I love seeing people who would have had purely manual tasks in the, in the past. You now picking up a robotic teach pendant and programming a robot to do work that can be left to it and then they're elsewhere furthering themselves. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's a sign of, of a advancing economy, uh, the level of automation that you have in the economy. We've come to Ireland to a place called Maynooth, which I can barely even say, but Tom knows a lot about it because he's been helping with opening up a brand new subsidiary for Fanuc in Ireland. Tom, we saw a presentation by Tenzo Asan, and he was talking about Japanese manufacturing and local service. Yes. Why is it important to have local service? I think every country Fanuc is in has got local managers. Fanuc's absolute philosophy has always been to have local people serving the local market. Every country is run by people from that country. Individuals in that country know that market need better than anybody else. So it makes sense, and it makes sense over here now to do it over here. The Irish market is, is a mature market. It has some fantastic blue chip companies. I mean, there's, there's an awful lot of big American investment over here. And they've got very high level manufacturing. It's pharmaceutical, medical, the, the, the real high level stuff is over here. Um, so it, it needs that level of service and support, and we can offer that out on Maynooth now. It's funny looking at the, the presentation from Tenzo Asan again was about, you've got almost, almost I don't know quite the exact number, but to almost 27 subsidiaries, something like that, which is a huge number of subsidiaries to kind of try and manage as a company from mm -hmm. Japan. Do you think um, Fanuc, that's part of Fanuc's success is that they've kind of, they've got all of these little kind of little plants Absolutely. sprouting all around the world? Absolutely. Um, and the, the automation market now in the world is big enough that each country does need its own. Everybody knows they need to manufacture. Every country has to manufacture it. You know, even if there's only 5 million people over here, you still need to provide for 5 million people. We need to provide for 70 million people in the UK. Um, so you have to manufacture. And a lot of countries are waking up to that manufacturing is important again. It was certainly in the UK. It was forgotten for a little while. And it was forgotten in a lot of countries, apart from Germany and places, that manufacturing is vital. Um, so we're back on that trail now and, and the rest of the, the world is, is catching up we, we, and we need to keep moving ahead. And the one thing that we, we're lucky that we don't have over here is we don't have huge investment for the last 20 or 30 years so there isn't that much legacy system over here so it, it's a blank canvas. The Irish market can go anywhere it wants to go. It can choose to do it because it doesn't have anything that it needs to hold on to. I love that. Blank canvas and, and a positive future for Ireland. So if it was such a positive future for Ireland, how come it's taken you so long to build a physical tech centre here? Well, part of it was we did support it out of Coventry. Because we're a system builder in Coventry, we were able to support it out of Coventry. I think the level of inquiries and the, the level of interest in automation now around the world and in Ireland in particular has got to such a level that it does need local boots on the ground to be able to visit everybody all the time. Um, we want to get far more proactive in the Irish market and you can see that today with the number of people that came here today. If we need to go and see 80 different customers that's a lot of man days taken up to go and do that. Um, so we were able to get the message across that automation is there, that we are now here in the market. We're the only company that has the range of products to be able to do what we do. We can provide that full factory automation experience with the drills, cut shots, robots. Um, so yeah, we're able to here to support the customers. Great. So if you're hearing that and you're in the Irish market and you're looking for automation, you don't quite know where to go, come to the Fanuc Tech Centre. It's open. We're here at Minute, just outside of Dublin. I'm going to talk to some of those boots on the ground now. Well, hopefully Absolutely. maybe Connor or Ronan about exactly what is the Irish market, um, where the opportunities are and, and how they can best support their customers. So Connor, Tom mentioned there's, there's huge opportunities in the Irish market that potentially might be a little bit untapped right now. Why are there so many opportunities and why is it taking so long for engineering companies to get into the Irish market? Well, in our case, we've been here as long as we've been in, in, in any country, really. What we've discovered since Fanuc Ireland has been established is just how much Fanuc equipment is in place in manufacturing environments in Ireland. It might not have been Fanuc UK who put the equipment in, but it would have been one of our colleague subsidiaries somewhere else in, in the world. So, for instance, in Ireland, if you had a, a sawmill, there may be three sawmills in Ireland. So you're not going to have companies here or even in the UK that would have a specialism in that area but there might be a company in, in Sweden or Germany that would have that capability and they would be using FANUC equipment. So what we've learned is once we've publicised the fact that FANUC now has an operation here, people are coming out of the woodwork, pardon the pun, uh, telling us uh, that, look, we already have this equipment. It's brilliant now to hear that the servicing is, is available, training is available, etc. So from, from a starting point, I would say that 
there's a lot more automation than people probably give, give credit for. And how does Fanex Tech Centre here help you provide support to your customers? What, what, do you, what can you provide support to your customers now that you couldn't do before? Absolutely. Great, great, great question, Ron, right? Because it, it's easy for people to, to visualise automation in high volume um, manufacturing like, like, like automotive, electronics, etc. But you know, I, I've built up my family business in, in, in food and, and we've packaging, but at the end of our line here, we have one person who spends their day picking up 10 kg boxes and putting them on a pallet. Is automation relevant to me? Well, absolutely it is. That person is probably lifting four tons a day and putting it on there. They could be redeployed elsewhere to be doing higher value work. So for, for, for roles that are, you know, tasks that are dirty, dangerous or dull, that's not what humans are made to do. I, I genuinely don't believe you know, people were put on this earth to just do that type of repetitive task. I have a great belief in the capability of people to, to do better work. So look, before you ask me the question, do robots take people's jobs? I say absolutely not. I love seeing people who would have had purely manual tasks in, in the past, you know, picking up a robotic teach pendant and programming a robot to do work that can be left to it and then they're elsewhere furthering themselves. So. You know, I, I think it's, it's a sign of, of a advancing economy, uh, the level of automation that you have in the economy. As, as an economy advances, the opportunities for people in those economies advance, and that feeds into, into all different areas. So in, in case the message doesn't get across well enough, I mean, if, if you're a, a, a company in Ireland that has 10 employees, but you have tasks that you think are look fundamentally dangerous, maybe like 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 welding, or could be dirty tasks like waste sorting, uh, or you just have dull tasks where somebody is just doing the same thing, picking from here, putting to there all day long, potentially doing themselves some, you know, physiological damage. Give us a call. I mean, we are the number one factory automation company in the world, but an awful lot of that automation happens in companies with. You know, relatively low turnover, uh, owner-managed businesses, second, third generation companies. Um, so yeah, we'd, we'd love to have those conversations as well as with our very large international customers as well. Great, so if that resonates with you and you're in the Irish market, get in touch with Connor and the rest of the sales, t sales team. They've got a brand new tech center here in Fanuc in Ireland. Thank you, guys. Perfect. Thank you, Connor.